Hello everybody, today I have another um, series of duels for you um, with Shadow Era. This one is with my Skurvox deck and it's for the tag team tournament. Uh, since I have five duels here, I'm going to actually be commentating over a sped up um, uh, over the video sped up. So I sped up all the videos um, by two times. So uh, that's why uh, it's a little bit faster here. So um, anyway, uh, I was expecting a Garth um, because in my last video I had brought a uh, Banebow and uh, because the other opponent is allowed to choose any rogue hero, uh, I figured that they would try and go for a lower cost um, deck uh, so that they would be able to get around a lot of the resource drain uh, from the Banebow. Um, so I brought this Skurvox and the idea being that if the opponent spams the board with low cost allies, then you can use Skurvox's ability to make them all disabled and poisoned, which is really, really good. Um, it's kind of, uh, it's not like a board wipe, I would say. It's, it's more like you would disable all of the opponent's low cost allies, and if they have low enough health, then they'll die eventually. So um, it can be very good against a lot of decks that like to spam allies, like uh, uh, Garth, um, in some situations. The other nice thing about Skurvox is that uh, it has um, Krugel Butcher, so if you poison a high cost ally, like um, a, a 7 cost ally, then you can kill it if it's poisoned uh, with a Butcher. So um, because of the fact that there's uh, ways to deal with both high cost and low cost allies, I thought that Skurvox would be a good choice. So. Um, here in this duel, uh, it looks like I'm going against uh, Second Lion, and so uh, here um, it looks like right now he's using Ankle Breaker to try and uh, disable my allies. So um, Ankle Breaker is hard to deal with for this deck. Uh, I didn't really bring in any counters other than uh, Lost Line Nexus, so I actually kind of drew it a little bit late here, but. Um, and as you can see, I just used Krugel Butcher to kill uh, Kian, which is probably, um, which is why I run it, uh, to kill the uh, high-cost allies. Um, but yeah, uh, Ankle Breaker is difficult to deal with, so generally this, what this deck likes to do is um, it will use uh, it will use the ability of, or it will use weapons to try and lower the durability of, of things like Ankle Breaker. Or in this case, Spirit Shuriken, which is also very annoying for this deck because um, Spirit Shuriken has an ability that, uh, for one Shadow Energy, you can uh, deal damage to an ally equal to the number of allies your opponent has. So, right now he's using uh, Spirit Shuriken to kill my Camouflage Foe, and then he uses it uh, again since it can attack too um, to kill my Cruel Butcher. So. It's a very, very good card, and it only costs four resources, so it actually, I cannot destroy it with Lost Line Nexus. Um, so it's a very good card. I also run a bunch of traps. I run traps like Net Trap and Death Trap. Um, they're, uh, they're mainly for high cost allies, uh, because uh, like Death Trap there, uh, it kills an ally when it's summoned. So ideally you want to be doing that against a high cost ally, but um, of course your opponent can play around it. The thing about traps is that you set them face down so your opponent doesn't know what it is. Um, they can kind of tell based off of the cost, but they don't actually know um, what the trap card is. So you could, um, like, for example, if I put down this trap, Camouflage Foe, my opponent doesn't actually know that it's Camouflage Foe. They have to guess. It could be Death, death Trap. So that's why um, my opponent might be hesitant to, uh, to summon allies, because um, they might not know if it's... Uh, if it's dangerous for them or not. Um, so yeah, uh, it looks like I'm in a bad position in, in this um, here because I've got no way to draw cards and my um, my yeah I, uh, my field was empty. But uh, I actually that's the nice thing about Skurvox. Actually, it's a great catch-up hero. So um, because it disables every opposing ally. Um, it lets me play my allies and not have to worry so much about them dying. So, um, because all of my opponent's allies will be disabled and they can't attack. So, um, 
So yeah, one of the best things about Scrobox, in my opinion, is the fact that you can just um, you can summon a bunch of allies on your turn and then use the hero ability, and that will disable all of your opponent's allies so that your allies can uh, have really good survivability. Um, so here it looks like I'm going to uh, I'm not going to use the hero ability. So yes, um, that's the other thing about Scarebox. Um, you don't want to use the hero ability too much because it costs four shadow energy, and that's a lot of shadow energy. So uh, if you use it all the time, then um, then your opponent can just uh, wait until you don't have any shadow energy left and then play all of their allies. So. With Skurvox, you do want to hold off on using the ability as much as possible. Um, it's really especially nice when you've got a lot of shadow energy. Like, uh, 7 is a really good number because that means you can use the shadow ability twice in a row. Um, which can totally swing uh, a duel in your favor. So here I have to wonder about what I'm going to do. Um, I could use the sha uh, the ability, uh, which I do, and use Vulture to kill the Visca, um, which puts me in a decent position because it makes it kind of awkward for uh, Sega to kill um, because it has 4 health. and um, So Sega actually ends up using Ankle Breaker on it uh, to disable it. Um, which is actually really nice because I've been holding on to Ley Line Nexus for a long time, so now I finally get to use that card. So, uh, Sega has another Shuriken, which is really uh, getting very annoying um, because it's preventing me from establishing uh, board control. So here I just summoned the um, Krugel uh, Defender. Uh, now the thing about this card is that it has Defender on it, so that means that when it's attacked it can attack back. Um, that's really good against things like a Night Owl, which only have 2 health, so if it attacks back um, before the opponent can attack then it will die before uh, it will actually uh, deal any damage. So. Um, so it turns out that Sega had to use uh, Visca to try and uh, get around that. So this is just going to show you how powerful Skrivax can be. Like I just dropped down a uh, very high cost ally, Drangus, uh, and it was basically, I, I could do that without uh, worrying about uh, losing uh, the card because of the fact that I had the hero ability to, um, to disable my opponent's allies. Uh, in that case, that was not the best example because he was still able to use Covert Operative to return it to my hand, so... Um, but in general, this deck can be very powerful against uh, ally-based decks. Um, So as you can see here, I elect not to use the shadow ability, um, even though I could have, and I could have spammed the board with a lot of high cost allies. Um, and the reasoning behind that is because I felt that it wasn't uh, worthwhile enough because the only ally I would effectively be, be uh, disabling is Raxnarian Soldier, um, and so I wanted to get a little bit more value out of the hero ability. So, um, so here Sega goes and plays two more allies, and that makes it a lot uh, more attractive uh, for me to use the use the hero ability because that way I can disable uh, more allies uh, than I would have if I had used it last turn. So another key card that I actually haven't really talked about that much is Bounty Hunter, and that's a hero attachment. It attaches to your uh, hero, and it means that whenever a poison ally dies, you get a resource. Um, that's really, really strong because it means that you can um, uh, use Skrivox's ability and poison all of your opponent's allies, and then you get to actually go ahead and uh, use that, uh, the, kill those poison allies to get resources. So uh, it's very, very good um, in this deck. Uh, So 
So here I'm just thinking about what to do. I ideally want to clear my opponent's uh, opponent's board, um, but it looks like that they've got too much health, and so it'll be kind of difficult to do that. So uh, I instead uh, go for using Soul Seeker to uh, heal a little bit. So Soul Seeker lets you gain three health whenever you kill an ally with it, um, and that's really important because. Um, if Sega goes face uh, and starts attacking my hero, since I only have 16 health, it could be pretty dangerous for me. Um, so uh, this is um, a tricky situation again because it looks like my opponent uh, Sega has established a really uh, strong board. So like normally, this would be very difficult for. Um, me to deal with, but because I'm running Skirbox, uh, I can just disable all of them uh, using the hero ability. So, um, oh, and so uh, I use Shadow Knight, which normally would return a card in my graveyard to my hand, but uh, because of um, the effect of Spirit Warden, it actually uh, disables that, so I wasn't able to uh, do that. Um, and I actually kind of forgot about that uh, there. So here I use Soul Seeker to attack the hero, and the reason I do that is because I want to start going face here, um, but also because uh, I really need to uh, get the durability down on the uh, on the spirit um, shuriken. So um, here I've got a card called Shadow Font. Uh, that gives you three Shadow Energy, which uh, normally is not great in most decks because um, uh, it just is not the... Uh, three Shadow Energy is okay, but not spectacular. But in this deck, it is very, very good because Scrovax has a really unique ability and, um, and because it's kind of stall-like, uh, what Shadow uh, Font lets you do is basically survive an extra turn, so um, it's a very good value for just a 4 resource uh, uh, card. So my opponent smartly uses um, the opportunity to start spamming the board with allies um, because they notice that I have uh, no shadow energy remaining so that I can't actually go ahead and uh, disable all of his allies. Um, that being said, because of the tools in this deck, like Spirit Shuriken and Butcher, uh, even when I don't have access to the hero ability, it uh, it is very possible to start um, taking control of the board. Uh, and so here it's uh, game over because... Uh, or not game over yet actually, uh, sorry my bad. Um, but it is looking very good uh, for me in this position because I've got control of the board and my opponent has very low health. So. So yeah, and uh, games with Skirbox can be very long because Skirbox is more of a control hero. Um, the one I'm running, I would say, is is kind of a balance between control and uh, and a little bit of mid range, but um, which just means that it uh, usually I will um, mid range just means that I play a lot of cards in the middle of the duel. Um, to try and compete with uh, with the opponent there, but um, but yeah, uh, Skirbox is generally a control hero. It actually um, is uh, a lot of the times used for stall, um, a stall deck. So uh, I didn't go with a stall deck because stall is usually not that great um, in this. Uh, just the the number of options you have as a stall deck are kind of limited um, in Shadow Energy, uh, in Shadow Era, which I actually I kind of is one of the good things about Shadow Energy. Era, I would say, because um, you don't have to deal with stall that much uh, in the in the game because um, uh, there's a lot of push to uh, stop um, 
to uh, make stall like not as good uh, because it's just not fun to play against. So um, that being said, this is a pretty controlly deck. So uh, it's it has the elements of a stall deck without actually being a stall deck. So um, anyway, uh, here uh, I think I made a mistake sacking the Shadow Knights because I think that it would have been uh, nice to have in the future. But um, otherwise, I'm opening pretty standard. Uh, using Frugal Trapper to kind of have some board presence here and also get the free trap from the deck. Um, and with Camouflaged Foe, uh, it's looking like it'll be tough for my opponent to um, to summon an ally because it will trigger my trap. Anyway, here I've got a lot of decisions to make um, and I ended up sacking the uh, Quick Shot. I like Quick Shot a lot, but against Garth, it is not great because. Um, Garth's ability doubles the damage to one of your allies, and uh, so the normally the benefit of playing Quick Shot is the fact that it has six health. But when the damage to it is doubled, uh, it's not as good. Um, anyway, uh, I ended up um, using something called Shriek of Vengeance. Uh, that card is really good against rogues uh, that like to ro uh, run things like Black Market and uh, Ilgon Gains because it lets you destroy any 4 cost or less uh, item. And it only costs 1 resource. Now the problem is, with that card is that it blows up a resource um, that you have, but the thing about Skirvox with Bounty Hunter is that once you play Bounty Hunter you can start getting resources basically for free. Um, so uh, it can get very strong um, very quickly. Uh, because um, because then if you don't need to pay the if you don't have to pay attention to the resource cost then uh, it's it's very good so um, but anyway um, here it looks like I played the butcher uh, and the reason I did that was to try and uh, rush the opponent and force uh, Sega to do something about it because um, I'm noticing that he only has 17 health so there's a good chance I can go ahead and uh, rush him and if I can deal enough damage fast enough, I might be able to uh, win the game. Now here, I would have attacked with Trapper, but I think that um, it wouldn't be as worth it because of Ankle Breaker right now, uh, which would actually uh, kill my Trapper if I attacked with it. Um, the nice thing though is that uh, with um, with the Krugel Defender, uh, it's awkward for him to attack Trapper uh, because actually um, the ability of Defender makes it so that uh, your opponent can't attack any of your other allies as long as it's alive. So here, I really like Hunter's Gambit, and it's basically my only source of draw, but I actually sacked it, and the reason I did that was because I wanted to be on 6 resources so I could summon Rangus next turn. And also because it looks like my opponent isn't playing allies, so um, it would be very, uh, very hard to. I mean, you, I wouldn't be able to use Hunter's Gambit because of that. Um, anyway, so it's kind of a dead card here. Anyway, I ended up using uh, Shadow Knight to um, to control the board. So um, it's yeah, it, it can get very annoying for my opponent since I can just start uh, summoning allies every turn, and then um, Sega has to deal with it, otherwise he runs the risk of losing due to uh, me rushing him. Um, and I think part of the reason he was trying to avoid playing allies is probably because of the fact that I have so much shadow energy, um, but here he has to, because otherwise there's just no chance he can possibly uh, um, uh, control the board again since I'm just summoning allies every single turn. So yeah, uh, Saga is running a Garth that has both Black Market and Ilgon gains, so I think the idea here is that... Um, so, so the deal with Black Market is that you can steal a card from the top of your opponent's deck, uh, and then that way... Uh, you can start milling the opponent out. So I think part of the uh, strategy with his deck is to kind of um, 
wait and hopefully slowly burn out the opponent until they run out of cards um, and things to do. So, uh, so that actually is kind of why I think Skrivax is doing so well, um, because I can actually afford to uh, wait until the um, wait until the uh, end of the um, end of the uh, end of my deck. Uh, and they won't really affect me that much. So Black Market is not as good against Scrubbox, uh, for sure. So here it looks like I've got this um, in the bag, and so uh, unless he can wipe out all of my allies, then I think I've got this game. So now I just wanted to talk a little bit about the tag team tournament. Uh, the idea behind it is that you're partnered with a friend, and um, you're dueling in uh, teams, so um, every team is two people and uh, you duel one of their team members and your team member duels the other uh, team members. Now if both you and your partner beat both of your opponents, then you get to move on. Uh, so, uh, but if one of you loses, you're still not out of the tournament, but it, let's say you lose for example, then your partner would have to win against both their opponent and your opponent uh, as well. So, um, in this case, uh, since I beat Sega and Inevitable beat my partner, uh, we had another match to determine who would uh, be the best team. Um, and Inevitable is running at Lance, so uh, that's, I would say, um, it can be tough at times for Skrillbox because Lance likes to run a lot of high cost allies. And so, uh, while I do have ways to deal with high-cost allies, um, it's, in general, um, hard if my opponent starts spamming high-cost allies, because I've only, I'm only running four Krugel Butchers in the deck, and uh, some of the high-cost allies are going to be very hard to uh, kill by just using um, your, uh, your uh, poison damage every turn. So in this game, it looks like I was able to get my Bounty Hunter out very early, which is always extremely nice. Um, and I was also able to get a very strong ally out in the very, uh, very early on. So um, both of those things are looking very good for me. Uh, here, I think I go for a Death Trap. Um, and the reason why is I was just worried that my opponent would uh, summon an ally and uh, and then haste it to kill my um, braggart. It turns out that that was probably not the best move because he had an ankle breaker anyway. So um, so ankle breaker is always tough for the stack to deal with. Um, it's one of the main issues because if I start controlling the board, then it's really easy for Lance to just use Angle Breaker to uh, take back control of the board. So I've got to get rid of it immediately, which is why I use Soul Seeker to try and uh, run down the durability on it. Uh, so um, unfortunately, uh, Inevitable is running a lot of item destruction. So things like Stop Thief and, Ar and Archaic Looting are very good against this deck because I run a lot of items, and so. Uh, Stop Thief was able to destroy my Soul um, Soul Seeker, which was very good, and it's also able to destroy my uh, Death Trap. So, um, yeah, it's not ideal for me when my opponent can just destroy all my items. Um, it's looking like I'm still in an okay position though, because I've still got a an ally on board and. Uh, I still have a lot of shadow energy, so um, here I'm okay right now. Um, and so uh, when Inevitable summons Kian, uh, it is something I have to deal with basically right, uh, like immediately because Kian's ability reduces the damage from, uh, to friendly allies by one, and that normally wouldn't be a problem. But uh, in this deck, you do a lot of small um, increments of damage, so like. Each poison damage only deals one damage, so Keon actually prevents all poison damage from um, hurting any of your allies. So that's why it's something if I don't deal with quickly, can really uh, 
can really hurt the stacking. So that's why I used Butcher on that. Uh, anyway, okay, so I got very lucky there and I drew into another Butcher, um, which is perfect because I need to deal with uh, Nathaniel, um, which is the 7 off alley. Uh, actually, I think I end up not using the hero ability because I wanted to uh, maybe get a few more allies. Um, I wanted to poison a few more allies, so I'm actually going to wait here and uh, try and bait out um, uh, Inevitable uh, and get him to summon the uh, allies. So Inevitable does and he summons two Night Owls, which is um, really good because that means that I can go ahead and use the ability. And uh, since I have Bounty Hunter out, it's going to let me get a lot of resources, which I can use with Animal Elixir. So I didn't mention Animal Elixir yet, but it's a very, very good card in this deck because what it does is it lets you blow up a resource to draw a card, and that is extremely good when you're getting uh, resources all the time from, um, from Bounty Hunter. Uh, another thing I didn't mention is Stun Turret. Uh, Stun Turret is very nice in this deck against uh, Lance because it basically negates the uh, passive abilities of one of my opponent's allies. Um, Inevitable really needs draw in Lance. Uh, that's one of the weaknesses of Lance, actually, um, because Lance, um, at least his Lance, doesn't use things like ill-gotten gains and stuff, so he's basically relying on the draw from his allies in order to uh, keep drawing cards. Um, and draw is extremely important in any card game, so uh, it's something that if I can disable his allies um, before they can use their draw power, then um, then I will be in a very good uh, spot. So there I actually use uh, Spirit Shuriken to kill one of the Night Owls instead of uh, Hunter's Gambit. And the reason I do that is so I could put down a trap. Now uh, the reason I do that is because I want to make it very awkward for uh, Inevitable to uh, summon allies. Um, so Inevitable ha probably has a bunch of high cost allies in his hand, but if he summons it into a net trap, then it will be disabled for three turns. So um, it makes it very difficult for Inevitable to summon his high cost allies while I have a trap on the field. So here, uh, Inevitable goes for Oliver Fagan and takes uh, my Sneer Krug uh, into his hand. Um, Oliver Fagan is really good against this deck because uh, my deck also, uh, similarly to Inevitable, other than Anmore Elixir, I have very limited sources of draw, so um, it's it can be very hard for me to uh, go ahead and, uh, and keep drawing cards if uh, if Inevitable uses Oliver Fagan to start stealing uh, cards and taking away my card advantage. So here it looks like Inevitable starts going face. Um, and so uh, I think he wants to close out the duel quickly because he probably uh, is, uh, is starting to get worried now that he has on 18 health. Um, so I guess he starts going face instead of trying to control the board. Uh, the other uh, element of that is that um, Oliver Fagan didn't have enough attack to kill Drengus, so maybe he went face uh, because of that as well. Um, but uh, that kind of shows how Skirbox can be powerful. If your opponent starts going face, you can disable all of your opponent's allies. So. Um, that way, uh, you can kind of stall for uh, as much time as you need. So, in this scenario, it's actually going to work in my favor um, because I can actually probably uh, rush face faster than he can. Um, so, in this situation, there's very little inevitable can do about the um, about my board. So, uh, here he disconnects. Uh, actually, I think. Um, and we start the next game, so I'm gonna speed that up real quick. So uh, this is game two uh, between me and Inevitable. Um, so Inevitable goes first because I went first in the last game. Um, so in tournaments you switch off like that. Uh, 
That's because first uh, going first is usually an advantage. Um, so you usually want to go first if you can. Uh, and by switching off, it reduces that uh, luck from um, going first. Anyway, uh, here, um, inevitable summons uh, skilled uh, iron um, maker. And uh, so that means that I probably don't want to summon Trapper because then inevitable can just attack it and kill it. So I go to summon Enmore Elixir uh, just to uh, have it on the field for later. Here I think I make a big mistake by using Hunter's Gambit on Night Owl. Um, and the only reason why is because I think that against rogues it's actually pretty safe to set Camouflage Foe as an item. Um, because uh, any of the allies that he'll summon are probably too health. Um, at this point, so uh, that would have been much better for my board control. Instead, I use Spirit Shuriken to try and kill his allies, but I think sp this actually hurts me a lot in the late game because um, it means that I have less Shadow Energy, and Shadow Energy is so important to Skirvox and controlling the board later against the high cost allies that I think it was a big mistake to. Um, to not use Camouflage Poe and instead go for uh, a Spirit Shuriken to try and control the board. Anyway, um, it's looking like I'm in a pretty good position here, so I summon my Quick Shot and hope that um, my opponent can't kill it. So normally my opponent or Inevitable wouldn't be able to kill it uh, because it has so much health, but um, Inevitable actually does something clever with Thalia Black Rose. Uh, that ally lets you kill an ally by discarding a weapon. Um, so that actually is going to make it kind of tough for me because now I've lost the board and I don't have a lot of shadow energy, so I really don't want to be using it uh, right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, here I think I search a death trap, but I really honestly probably should have uh, searched out camouflage both. When I search Death Trap and Inevitable knows it's a Death Trap, it's really easy for him to play around it. So um, I think it would have been the same. Like he would have been able to play around Camouflage Bow as well, but um, it would have probably been a lot better for me because um, uh, because Camouflage Bow can be really. Um, I what I really need to be start doing is uh, get board control. Um, rather than trying to uh, kill uh, allies um, uh, with Death Trap, um, which is more of a control uh, control move. So here, uh, I probably should have go gone ahead and um, used Sacrificial Lamb on my Trapper to draw more cards. So, uh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, yeah, because I knew that Trapper was going to be killed anyway, uh, it actually would have probably been worth it to uh, just uh, use Sacrificial Lamb. Um, I think that uh, using the ability of Spirit Shuriken to try and kill uh, Dahlia Black Rose was, or deal damage to Dahlia Black Rose was probably a mistake because it puts me in, uh, in a bad position when it comes down to using my uh, hero ability. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, I go ahead and try and control the board from here, uh, with another Spirit Shuriken, and, um, and it might seem like it's working very well for me, which it is, but, uh, you also have to realize, I guess the other thing, on the other hand, I'm losing a lot of Shadow Energy to do that, so, um. So that's going to hurt me as inevitable as a full hand and is going to start summoning high cost allies every turn. So um, so since I don't have any traps on the field, he can safely summon Nathaniel and, uh, and that's going to be very hard for me to go ahead and deal with. Here I probably, uh, I know, I, I mean I usually, it, I, I probably should have summoned Drangus here. Um, it's hard to say, but I think that uh, 
I really should have started baiting more of my opponent's allies rather than um, oh and I actually do do that uh, huh. um, but yeah I, I probably should have been instead of using the hero ability there I, I probably should have held off and waited to bait out a few more of my opponent's allies Because here, he's able to kill my Drangus anyway, so my hero ability didn't really help me there at all. Um, and actually uh, using it then was um, a big wonder for me, I think. Um, because now, now that he has 5 allies on board, I can't even go ahead and uh, use it uh, now, so... Um, and uh, yeah, Spirit Shuriken is going to let me kill Oliver Fagan, but it's going to put me on 2 Shadow Energy, which is a very bad place to be in when my opponent has a lot of allies on the field. So, um, so yeah, overall in this game, I think I was too greedy and I used my Shadow Energy too much. And that led to a situation where it, um, it became very hard for me to go ahead and uh, try and... Um, stall out the game for longer. So this game is actually really short and uh, I think that's partially because of my um, the fact that I used channel energy too quickly. So here it's uh, here there's nothing I can do because I've got no way to draw cards and my opponent has an established board and I have no way to uh, deal with that established board because I uh, don't have enough shadow energy. So here inevitable goes and is able to win. So um, uh, so yeah, uh, in the next game, we're gonna have a random, uh, it's gonna randomly select who goes first, so, um, here I think I go first again, which is really nice, um, uh, so in this game, uh, I'm not a huge fan of my starting hand, um, the reason why is because I really ideally want to be seeing allies. And I've got no allies other than Drangus, which is a six uh, cost ally. So, um, so it's kind of awkward for me to try and do things because I've got no way to control the board since I've got no uh, allies in him. Um, excuse me. So here I end up deciding to play and more elixir again, just so I can have it on the field. Um, I, it is a little bit risky uh, because this lets Inevitable have the ability to stop me for something to destroy it, but I think overall it's um, it's not bad to have it on the field, uh, and I just have to hope that my opponent doesn't draw into uh, item destruction there. Um, so yeah, uh, here it looks like I'm in a pretty good position actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, I uh, end up going for summoning Sneerkrug. Uh, so Sneerkrug is really good against uh, rogues because of the defender on it. So, um, so it's making it kind of awkward for Inevitable to deal with it. Uh, so here I'm able to draw cards through Hunter's Gambit, and I'm liking my prospects right now because it looks like I was able to draw into enough allies and drop my own board. So. Uh, overall, it's looking pretty good, um, and I've got a trap on the field, so um, so that's also really good. For me. Um, yeah, so that kind of puts inevitable in an awkward position. So he has to go ahead and use his shadow ability to go ahead and kill my sneer bug. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, he does that, and now I've got a pretty good hand, um, I'd say. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is where things take a big turn for the worse. Um, he gets uh, a very good draw from Nathaniel and summons a Keon. So this is not looking good at all because um, Keon is one of the counters to this deck, and it's going to make everything. Um, uh, everything of mine easier for him, or harder to kill, or everything of his harder to kill because it, I, it, I get one less damage on everything, so, um, so I'm kind of forced into using my shadow ability there.
which is really too bad. So, um, so yeah, I, luckily I draw into Butcher, uh, so I was trying to kind of work down Keon's health uh, last turn, but uh, since I have Butcher, I can just kill it, um, which is very nice. Uh, but it also now puts me in this position where uh, I really have to uh, kill Eris because Eris uh, can actually blow up my Bounty Hunter and uh, Bounty Hunter is going to be giving me a lot of card advantage so I end up actually sacrificing my Shadow Knight to uh, go ahead and kill it. Um, uh, so yeah, this is no longer looking amazing uh, because uh, now Inevitable has regained uh, board control um, pretty easily. So. Uh, yeah, him drawing into that Keon really changed the game there, uh, for the worst for me. So here it looks like uh, I'm going to use the Shadow ability again, uh, because I really can't have Eris blowing up my Bounty Hunter, uh, so that's gonna let me... Uh, have that extra turn of still having Bounty Hunter, which is kind of nice. Um, and hopefully, uh, so yeah, actually I'm gonna use Butcher to uh, kill um, Eris. So, um, so I should be safe from that for at least a little bit. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, Bounty Hunter is giving me a ton of resources and I'm on 10 resources uh, without having to sacrifice cards uh, that turn. So. Uh, Bounty Hunter is really really good in this deck when you can get it rolling and so here it's looking like I might be able to salvage this game because I have the engine uh, going. Um, unfortunately it looks like his ankle breakers are doing a lot of work and uh, preventing me from taking control of the board very effectively so um, so here I have to make a tough choice. I really don't want to use Butcher because I want to save it for something else but at the same time, I really need to start getting control of the board, so I actually do opt to go ahead and uh, use Butcher. The other thing I decide to do is start getting some draw, um, so I also use Hunter's Gambit on Nathaniel so that I can uh, draw cards this turn. Um, now maybe I should have uh, tried and waited, but I was really worried that Inevitable would start rushing face if I was able to... Um, if I was able to uh, uh, kill it without using uh, Butcher. Anyway, here it's looking like uh, he is able to get another skilled Ironmonger and, uh, off of Nathaniel, which is really good for him because it's just giving Ankle Breaker one more durability, uh, which is actually very bad because um, Ankle Breaker is extremely good in this uh, against my deck. So. Um, I am a little bit worried uh, at this point because now that Inevitable can start summoning fatties every turn, uh, I really should be going face and trying to uh, do more things on my turn, but uh, yeah, it's I can't really effectively do that because of Ankle Breaker, so I'm kind of forced into this position of um, fighting for the board even though I would really rather be going face. Uh, yeah, so, um, so here's a position where I am still having to think about, uh, about my hero ability. I don't want to use it yet because Inevitable doesn't have a lot of allies out, but at the same time, on 18 health, I probably should be trying to uh, not uh, lose immediately, so I go ahead and use the hero ability uh, for that reason. Um, uh, so yeah, I end up going and hitting Nathanius, uh, and the reason why is so that um, when it's on 2 health, it will actually end up dying, because what you can do is, um, if you... Uh, if you wait a turn, so it takes one poison damage, and it's disabled, then on the next turn it will actually die from the poison damage. So two health is a really good place to put um, uh, your opponent's allies on. 
Now that actually works against me, because uh, actually Inevitable has a third Eris, which is kind of crazy, actually. Um, and so I wasn't expecting that at all. Uh, and so he he's able to blow up my Batman Company, which it doesn't sound like a big deal, but it really is when I've got uh, no real way of um, of getting a large amount of resources now. So he's effectively uh, disrupted my engine, which is uh, not a great place to be. Now that being said, it's still a pretty good position for me, uh, just because of the fact that uh, I have more card advantage than he does. Um, but he's still able to uh, control my uh, field using a combination of Dahlia and Ember uh, Breaker. So, um, so this puts me in a very tough spot where I have to find a way to um, control the board. And so here I do something uh, that probably isn't ideal. Uh, I have to use Shuriken to uh, deal damage to Dahlia. And that costs a shadow energy, so I think that may have been a mistake. Uh, it's hard to say because uh, at this stage in the game, I really have to start wor worrying about um, inevitable going face and dealing a ton of damage to me. So, um, and the reason why is because Lance has the ability that gives haste to one of his allies. So, um, oh yeah, and another um, Iron Monger, of course. So uh, that's gonna hurt. Um, but yeah. Um, it, I have to start worrying about face because Lance's shadow uh, ability lets him haste his allies, so if I get to like 5 or 6 health I could lose um, just from him being able to start hitting me uh, directly. Anyway, here I end up having to use the shadow ability um, because I don't want him again to start uh, going face and being able to kill me from there, so I end up going and uh, doing that, so yeah. Alright, well anyway, um, here I could have played Butcher on Nathanius, and it probably would have been a good idea, but I did want to summon a trap, so I ended up going for a trap um, there. And the other nice thing about that is I can save Butcher for later, so I can always kill Nathanius on the next turn uh, if I need to. So here, uh, Inevitable uses an Archaic Looting which destroys all items on the field. Uh, it's extremely good against this deck, so um, it means that I basically lost my elixir, which is was my main source of draw, and uh, so yeah, now I'm in this situation where um, where I don't have any items, so I really need to start uh, hoping that my board controls enough. Um, which unfortunately in this scenario, uh, Inevitable has the, enough fatties that it's going to be very hard for me to um, keep controlling the board when he's using uh, his deck uh, lets him summon a, a fatty every single um, turn. So yeah, this is a good example of how Inevitable is able to carefully plan his moves to go around my traps. So Nut Trap is really good uh, against his fatty allies, but because he's able to use skilled Ironmonger, to trigger it, uh, he's able to get around that. So, uh, so now that he has an Oliver Fagan that uh, on the field, and I've got nothing to stop it, um, I'm in a very tricky situation. So here, um, here, I mean, I think I was pretty desperate. So I'm just trying to stop him from going face. So I end up going and. Uh, summoning my bobcat. Now, I probably shouldn't have done that because it was just ended up being like a wasted card for me, but um, I think that, uh, yeah, uh, I was just very worried about the him going face and I didn't want to use my shadow font immediately because I wanted to save that for uh, an immediate situation where I would absolutely need it. Um, 
So yeah, it turns out that was uh, probably a bad play because he's actually able to not only kill my Bobcat, but disable my quick shot. So had I not played Bobcat, but instead used, um, instead had used my Shadow Font for an earlier turn, I would have been able to summon in my uh, Soul Seeker this turn, and probably it would have at least made it easier for me uh, to hold on for another turn. So. Um, in this situation, I've lost here because there's absolutely nothing I can do, and um, so uh, so here I end up going, and um, I'm looking at a way to maybe gain some health from Soul Seeker, but uh, the only thing I can do here is maybe kill the um, Ironmonger and. Uh, and that's still not enough healing to uh, prevent him from going face this turn, so... Um, yeah, it looks like uh, the Inevitable and Sega's team uh, will win the Tag Team Tournament, so um, congrats to them. Um, but hopefully this still showed you a little bit of uh, how you would play a Skirbox deck, and um, how it has uh, some strong potential against rogues um, because of the fact that you can deal with both fatty allies and the um, low-cost allies as well. Uh, thanks for watching!